Hello there, and welcome to the Scruffy Looking Nerd Herders podcast. I'm your host, Tyler, bringing you all things nerd and geek related. And on this episode, I'm going to be discussing some gaming rumors and news, and a little bit of some movie and TV announcements. Um, so, here we go. Okay, and jumping right on into this uh, episode, um, so I've touched and discussed before in previous episodes about Telltale Game Studios closing and the whole um, issue with their uh, The Walking Dead final episodes. Um, well, Robert Kirkman, it was actually announced and discussed at um, New York City Comic Con, but it's been discussed more recently. So Robert Kirkman announced that the final episodes will be released via Skybound, which is the game publishing company that he owns. And Skybound has said that it will be working with members of the original Telltale team to finish the series in a way that the fans deserve. Like they feel like this will help bring an ending and a closure to uh, the fans on characters that they've grown to become really attached to over the years um and now sky skybound i don't know if you guys are familiar with them but they're more known for comics but they did announce a game publishing division back in april um but they've also been a part of games such as the walking dead's road to survival uh a, the game super fight and the game giant cop um but there hasn't really been any much more news announced on like a time window on when they're going to be releasing the episodes. Um, but that might also help open the door for the other game projects that telltale were working on to be released and finalized and all that, such as the, uh, stranger things game and, um, game of Thrones and stuff like that. Um, according to, sources that are close to Kotaku, um, they have reported that Microsoft is finalizing a deal to acquire the development studio Obsidian Entertainment. Um, and these sources, uh, when discussing with Kotaku, had said that the deal is about 90% finished, and it's not a matter of um, if, it's more of a matter of when it's going to happen. So, like, they're all pretty much like they're 90% sure, you know, this is going to happen. Um, and Obsidian Entertainment is responsible for games like Knights of the Old Republic 2, Fallout New Vegas. And um, back in 2012, it actually almost went out of business. And they were able to cut a deal and became the developer for an online tank game that's pretty popular. And they were also able to launch an extremely successful Kickstarter, and it actually helped produce the isometric RPG that became Pillars of Eternity, which that game is wicked fun. Um, Microsoft's biggest weakness in this console generation has been exclusives, and Um, after their acquisition of the game studios like Playground Entertainment, Ninja Theory, and most notably Mojang, which is the creators of Minecraft, um, having a strong RPG developer will definitely allow them to compete against Sony in the next-gen consoles because Sony's already said that, you know, they're they're working on the next uh, iteration of the PlayStation. So... It's it kind of makes sense that uh, Microsoft would be wanting to uh, essentially buy up all these um, different game studios. So I think this would be really cool, especially to see um, you know some RPGs that are, are Xbox exclusives, um, just to help uh, garner up some good old fashioned competition. That'd be pretty rad. So there wasn't really a whole lot of uh, gaming news, but. Um, there is a uh, a service that I've been 
using here recently. Um, and I've been a huge fan of Geek and Sundry for a long while now, back whenever they had, you know, like the, the tabletop show with Will Wheaton. Um, and then they eventually had a merger with Nerdist. And, um, but did you know that they actually have their own video on demand service? Um, it's called Project Alpha. And it's really cool because I'm able to catch up on live streams that I end up missing for whatever reason, um, like Critical Role, because Critical Role, you know, it's an East or West Coast show, so it comes on pretty late um, in Central Time, which is where I'm located. And so it makes it easier because it, um, I can I can watch it before it hits any other uh, platform like YouTube or. Uh, because they, they also started doing it in a podcast format. And so I'm able to catch up on the live, on the episodes before they hit any other platform. Um, but they have giveaways, there's merch discounts, um, there's exclusive content that's only for alpha users. Um, and when they do live streams, there's live chats, so you can um, be involved in like the different uh, polls and stuff like that for the different live streams. Um, you can interact with the people on that are in the live stream and they answer questions and, um, and so there's so much more to it. And there's like, um, original programming that's on there, like, like live action stuff. Um, I'm currently, there was a podcast that I used to listen to and I loved it. It was a, uh, uh, scripted podcast and it was called we're alive and it was about a zombie apocalypse and it was really really well made it was really well done and um but they i i had no idea until the other day but i guess they also did a uh we're alive rpg like tabletop rpg uh on geek and sundry and it's really well made and it's it's funny it's it has you know the action it's intense and i'm catching up on that before season two hits uh because they just posted a teaser for season two and um i'm definitely looking forward to that my buddy vince queso is heavily involved in that and it looks pretty sharp i'm pretty excited for it so head on over to projectalpha.com to start your account and join thousands of other people within the community um so far it's been really awesome it's been uh you know i feel like they have a great service and i look forward to seeing it grow and getting even better so um head on over like i said it's projectalpha.com and start your account and this brings me to the end of the, or the last, uh, segments of the podcast. Um, so IGN confirmed that Ryan Coogler finalized his deal with Marvel to return for a Black Panther sequel. Um, and the first was co-written by him and Joe Robert Cole, but it has not been confirmed if Cole will return. Um, and this was kind of a no-brainer, you know, even like in Infinity War, whenever, uh, you know, spoiler alert, um, Black Panther didn't make it, you know, and he got, he didn't make it through the snap, and, uh, you know, everyone was, you know, well, you know, they just killed off their biggest moneymaker. It's like, well, you know, every, every, anyone that understands Disney and Marvel's um, business model, <laughs> they knew that the, the big players weren't, weren't going to be gone forever. And, um, so it was, it was definitely, uh, like I said, kind of, it was just a no brainer that they would be working on a sequel. It hasn't been officially announced. The only one that's really been, um, announced is, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. And, um, but Googler is looking to begin filming late 2019 or early 2020. And he will also have his plate full because he's also recently signed on to produce the, up came, the upcoming Space Jam sequel, um, which I believe that's actually going to be starring LeBron James, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. Um, but so I look forward to seeing the sequel to Black Panther um, and seeing what all they do with that. Um, 
because like I said, the first one was like a box office, like it was just insanity. And uh, like Disney put like Black Panther forward for, I think like 16 Oscar categories. Um, it's like, they're really pushing, like, you know, they want this, they want this movie to definitely make its mark on history, which I, I feel like it will. I mean, it already has. Um, so I look forward to that. And next per the Hollywood reporter, Freya Allen will portray Siri and Anya Shalotra will play Yennefer in Netflix's The Witcher. So they've cast the two other main characters in in the show. Um, And so these are kind of relatively unknown actresses, um, but Freya Allen will play Mary in the upcoming UK War of the Worlds miniseries. Um, So you'll be able to see her acting in that. And Anya Shalutra will is also in the new Wonderlust series, so if, you can always check out her acting in that. Um, but from what I've seen on any like message boards or comment sections, it seems to be like people are pretty excited for these um, actresses, like people who are familiar with their work, um, and the, you know they feel like they're going to do a, a great job. Um, but uh, also, Alik uh, Sakharov, <laughs> uh, who has directed episodes of House of Cards and Game of Thrones, will direct four episodes of the show. Alex Garcia Lopez and Charlotte Brandstrom will each direct two. And the showrunner and executive producer will be Lauren Schmidt Heistrich, who is the producer of Netflix's Daredevil and Defenders. Um, So this is, this show is just like shaping up to be like an overall all around just badass show. So I'm like pretty excited for Netflix to come out with the Witcher. Um, I, I, I know a lot of these, uh, streaming services are looking for, um, the next game of Thrones because game of Thrones is ending, um, you know, it's going to be in its final season. And once it ends, they want shows that can be like the game of Thrones replacement. Um, because I know like, uh, I think it, it was, yeah. So like Amazon has like the Lord of the Rings, um, Netflix, I believe it was, that's what I said last episode. Um, Netflix is doing, uh, Chronicles of Narnia and they also have the Witcher and I think Hulu is doing one as well. So they're all going to be, um, trying to compete for that replacement for Game of Thrones. And for fantasy lovers such as myself, it's a win-win. Um, <laughs> and last thing I'm going to discuss on this episode of the podcast is uh, Warner Brothers had announced that James Gunn was in talks and finalizing a deal to write, produce, and direct uh the Suicide Squad sequel. And that was honestly not really a surprise to me. And um because I had said whenever Marvel announced that they were letting James Gunn go that Warner Brothers would be absolutely stupid to not pick him up to do Suicide Squad because essentially David Ayer his you know, the, well, I shouldn't say his cut, but the final cut of Suicide Squad just looked like Warner Brothers was trying to mimic and imitate the success of James Gunn and Guardians of the Galaxy. So it kind of makes sense that Warner Brothers would pick him up to actually have that success of Guardians of the Galaxy, because I, I don't, I don't foresee, uh, his sequel bombing. Um, and, David Ayer himself has gone on Twitter and said that, hey, you know, James Gunn is the man for this job. You know, I wish him nothing but the best. I hope he knocks it out of the park. So, like, even David Ayer is on board with it. Um, Dave Bautista has, you know, went on and said, you know, congratulated James Gunn on this and even uh, went out of his way to say, hey, you know, like, you know, if you need someone, if you need to cast someone, let me know. I'm your man. So even like Dave Bautista is ready to jump ship from the MCU and over into DC from this casting or from this uh, announcement. 
And, um, and I just, like I said, I just think it's, it's, it's smart. 